Okay, so I'm just going to finish off my toolkit. Uh, I'm just going to cover these examples very briefly, but for the rest of the day, uh, we will cover you know each different sections in more detail. Are you enjoying the examples so far this morning? Yes. All right. Okay, let's spend a minute on uh, your handout. Take a look at the handout you have there, and you'll notice a couple of things. What I've put together here is a package that I'm hoping you can use for the rest of the day. Um, so for example, we talked earlier in the day about what your customers' needs and pain points are and what your business needs and pain points are. I'd like to just start making some notes about, in your organization, what are those pain points that you're trying to address? If you do that, it might help you better understand how to apply the technologies I'm teaching you into your own organization's uh, application in your organization. We also talked a lot about mobile technology enablers. The accelerometer, RFID, GPS, the camera, the audio. Can you apply any of those technologies to your organization, once again, to address business pain points? If so, I want you to start making some notes in here of what ideas you have of how you think you can apply it to your organization. So hopefully this will help you uh, take, take some notes about what ideas really uh, apply the best to your organization. The next page talks about, uh, is it a services innovation? Is it a product innovation? Can you create an entirely new business model innovation the way Home Plus did in Korea to sell groceries in a subway? Okay, so you got to ask yourself those questions. Can you create a whole new business model for rental cars? Whatever it is, how you can change the way business is being conducted today. So think about that. Then what I've done on the next four pages, or actually on the next one, page four, you notice the four sections I introduced you to, branding, closing the sale, commerce, and customer support. I'd like you to prioritize those four as I mentioned earlier. So my friend here from the hospital, you know, he doesn't care about the first three, he just cares about number four, customer support. Or he might care about employee systems to track assets or whatever it is. So make note of where you want to focus your efforts. Then on the next four pages, starting from page five, is each of the top ten lists that we're going to be covering for the day. So once again, nine of those might not apply to your business, but maybe you can find one that does apply to your organization. And I want you to take note of that and just start putting down some ideas of how you would apply it. Later on in the afternoon, we'll also do some workshops where I want you to share those ideas with the person beside you and how it might apply and how you might do it. And, and we'll get some ideas uh, bouncing around in those workshops. So then on the next four pages, Excuse me, you can see each of the top, the top 10 lists and hopefully that will help you decide how this applies to your organization. Then starting on page, well after that the pages aren't numbered, so starting on what's called Appendix A, uh, just some other background information that you might want to take a look at. For example, the next page is a market forces analysis. Is there things happening in the Panama market uh, with competition or with the demographics or, or of your economy or globalization? Is there certain things happening that may provide opportunities for your company or certain market forces that are what I call landmines could cause you a lot of problems in the future because the market is shifting and you have to see what direction the market is taking uh, in order to be successful. So there's a couple of pages on market forces you might want to think about. Then there's a page on doing a competitive, competitive analysis. Who are your main competitors and deciding whether they're taking some actions that you may want to be aware of and, and counter those actions. And then there's a SWOT analysis in case you wanted to do that. There's a target market analysis. And another interesting exercise uh, after that is creating strategic alliances. If you're going to get into this new market, does it make sense to create an alliance with another company? And then in the next section, I have something called creating a persona, which is creating a description of the typical customer you are trying to reach. And by creating a persona of that customer, it could help you decide how to address the needs of that customer. 
So that's another exercise in here that you might want to consider. And then on the very last page is just an action plan sheet. If you get any ideas from today that will lead to specific actions you should take, you can take notes of that on the last page. And that could be a marketing action. You know, a lot of people are asking me about building a mobile app and things like that. So take note of what you want to do on that app and who you should be talking to and, and things like that. So all of those things, of course, are optional. But if any of those are helpful, feel free to use this booklet throughout the day to help you organize uh, and plan what your next steps might be. Okay. All right. Okay. We are now in section C, the top 10 list for doing mobile commerce strategies. Guess what? We're finally going to sell something. Okay. So once again, for many of your industries and for your companies, this this section might not even apply at all. But, you know, like I said, you can decide whether it applies or not and, and react accordingly. If you want to sell goods via mobile devices, let's talk about what the 10 options are. Uh, number one is doing daily deals transactions. So that's through sites. Do you have Groupon down here? In Panama City, Groupon? Do you have other ones? Does anyone know the names of some other ones here? Can you yell it out? Okay. One more? Okay. Okay, so there's a lot here where you can sell things, uh, buy things from daily deal sites, but if you're a company, you need to decide if you should sell your product through those organizations. Be very careful in this area because one... Uh, company in the UK uh, sold cupcakes. They said, oh, we're going to sell cupcakes. The problem is that for these daily deals to work, typically you have to give a big discount, like 60% off, 70% off, sometimes 90% off, because you want people to buy the product, to try it out, and then maybe they'll become your regular customer. You want to get new customers into your location. The problem with the cupcake company in the UK they thought, okay, we'll do a daily deal. We'll just lose a little bit of money on each one. Uh, but maybe we'll get a lot of customers coming to visit us every week. Well, guess what? I think the number was up. They sold 102,000 cupcakes. They, they lost $20,000 <laughs> because they, they underpriced it. And Groupon or some of these other deal sites, they make 30 or 40% of the money goes to them. And so there's not as much left for you. So you you got to be careful how you structure the deal and it, are there enough people trying out your service uh, and whether or not you can keep those customers. So take a close look at this, but it may or may not apply to your organization. Uh, gift card transactions. There's a lot of products that I would never buy on, that I would never buy on a computer or I, I would probably not buy on my smartphone a pair of blue jeans. Okay, I want to try them on and, and see how they fit before I'm willing to buy it. However, if you have that kind of a product that is not a good fit, instead of selling the product, the blue jeans, you could be selling gift cards. So that's one other kind of transaction. You sell a $50 gift card, and now I will, buy the, I will go in some other time next month to go get my pair of blue jeans. The next is doing a commerce application in a mobile app right on the smartphone or on a mobile website. So that's one more way. People would set up an account, they'll key in their credit card number, you do authentication to make sure that it's a valid credit card number, and so all of that can be handled inside the mobile app. So that's another way to do a commerce transaction. The fourth way is something called a click-to-call transaction. Because once again, a lot of products, you see the product, but you have a lot of questions about it. You know, what color does it come in, and how big is it, and, and does it have that other accessory with it? You, you want to talk to somebody. So there's a new method of commerce called click to call, where once I see the product, it shows the phone number, and simply by tapping the phone number, I can now talk to the call center or the, or the store and ask them my questions. Okay, in fact, that banner ad on a Samsung uh, with the retina display, you might even be able to just pick up your phone and now you're, you're talking to somebody on, on the phone. Uh, from that company or from the call center. And now that I have them on the phone, I can ask them my questions. Does it, does it come in a large size and does it come in color blue? 
Uh, do you have any in stock at the store down the road? They could look up if it's in stock, and if it is, they can send you to the store, or better yet, they can close the sale on the phone. You want to buy that, sir? You don't even have to go to the store. Give me your credit card number, and we'll ship it out to you in three days, or one day, or a week, or whatever it is. So now I can do a click-to-call transaction. And the fifth one is a clicks and bricks transaction where I can make the purchase online, but then I could go to the store to pick it up. Or I could buy it online and then I get it home and I want to do a return. And returns are a big hassle for people. They got to put it back in the box and they got to go to the post office. If you have a good clicks and bricks strategy, no problem. You want to return it, you just come to the closest store and you can return it. So companies have to think about how they integrate uh, their clicks and bricks strategy. Number six um, is something that I call outbound and automatic transactions. Actually, let me come back to that one because I have a lot more examples of that in a few minutes. Um, but we'll move on. The next one is employee mobile transactions. With employee mobile transactions, we can turn a smartphone into a cash register to process transactions by the employee. So a pizza delivery person can arrive to your front door with your pizza, you hand them your credit card, and they can use a smartphone to process the transaction. Let's take a look at what that might look like with this really good example using the Square payment processing system, which is a simple device that simply plugs right in to the top of the phone. My name is Bill Harvey, and we're here at the Farmers Marketing Grand Lake in Oakland, and I sell sustainable pork products for a company called Oakland. Before Square, we didn't pay credit cards. People would ask if we took credit cards and we'd have to go. Some people come to the market with a limited amount of cash, and in this particular market, there is no ATU, and so when they find out we take credit cards, they're happy about it. And then when they see that it's a little tiny little machine on my iPhone, they're really happy about it. Since we've started taking credit cards, I would estimate that our business has probably increased by about 20 years. My whole thing about doing farmers markets is I like trying the least amount of things possible in my opinion. And the fact that my credit card machine weighs a grand or whatever it weighs, and I put it in my pocket is really nice. When the other vendors see what we have, they're curious. And I've actually seen that other vendors are using Square in this market. I like fast, I like easy, and I like uncomplicated, and Square fits into all those kinds of things. Okay, so you can see that with that example, we can turn um, this payment processing, this device into a payment processing system for any of our, any of our employees. Okay. <laughs> Let's take another look now at the next one, which is a tap and go transaction. With a tap and go transactions, it uses, once again, one of the sensor capabilities in the phone called NFC, Near Field Communications where many companies like MasterCard and others are creating tap and go transactions where I can store money on the phone and I can walk up to a cash register after I buy something and it has one of these devices attached to it and simply by tapping my phone to it I can transfer ten dollars from this phone to, their, to the retail store's system. So these systems are not very popular in America yet, but by 2016, uh, some projections suggest that 50% of all transactions will happen using these NFC tap and go transactions. And already in many countries around the world, uh, they already have these tap and go transactions. I spend a lot of time in Hong Kong, uh, and they have something called an octopus card. It's actually not on the phone right now, but it's a little card. And once again, you can tap and go any kind of a transaction. You take that card, uh, you go on the streetcar or a bus, you tap it, and it takes $3 or $2 off your card, and you sit on the bus. You go into a 7-Eleven, you buy a can of Coke, you tap it, there's a dollar off your card. You go into a bar, you buy five beer for your friends, you tap it, there's $20 off your card. So you can use that card as a tap and go transaction anywhere you go. Okay? So, like I said, it takes time for these technologies to reach the marketplace because, you know, the stores have to install uh, NFC readers and, you know, different systems aren't compatible with different things. So, uh, quite often these technologies take time to reach the market, but 
once again, the research suggests that this one's going to be big uh, within the next two or three years. Okay, next is in-store self-checkout transactions. The earlier example, we let the employee do the transaction. Now we're going to let the customer do the transaction. So let me show you what that might look like in this example using a, a system called Aisle Buyer uh, to, do the transit, to let the customer do the transaction. Imagine a world where you get all of the benefits of online shopping while standing in the middle of a retail store. Introducing Aisle Buyer, the smartphone application that is revolutionizing retail. Aisle Buyer provides shoppers with a personalized virtual shopping assistant and mobile self-checkout. For retailers, Aisle provides unprecedented analytics and labor savings. Now retailers have business intelligence on what shoppers are buying and on what shoppers are putting back on the shelf. Watch Aisle turn her smartphone into a personal shopping assistant and secure self-checkout device. While she's shopping, Aisle Buyer engages her via her smartphone. As she scans each item, our virtual shopping assistant provides additional product information and reviews. Aisle Buyer is also a targeted marketing platform that can show her customized sales and promotions. Our virtual shopping assistant both maximizes her in-store shopping experience and your in-store revenue. With Aisle Buyer, she no longer has to leave the aisle to complete a transaction with a few taps of her phone. A purchase can be completed in an instant, and the retailer receives a secure authorized payment. With this cutting-edge technology, retailers get the benefits of self-checkout hardware without the labor and capital costs. Aisle provides unprecedented business intelligence on what shoppers are buying and on what shoppers are putting back on the shelf. With Aisle retailers can capture new consumer information to help identify buying habits and demographics. Using Aisle Buyer, you will increase in-store revenue, improve marketing efficiency, lower labor costs, help the environment, and most importantly, help your customers have a better in-store experience. So, examples like this, once again, it may take a lot of time be before people are comfortable with doing things like that, so it might take years before you get enough people wanting to do it. And therefore, before you move to letting the employees do the transactions, it may make sense to focus on your own employees first before you move on to, uh, to letting the customer do it. Okay, and then the final payment method, uh, number 10 here, uh, is a whole series of payment processing innovations, and I'm gonna step you through several different techniques that we can use uh, that go beyond what you've seen here. Okay, <clears throat> let's take a look at some of them. So here's one question, how can I simplify my payment processes? Uh, here's an example of Pizza Express. They have an app that when you're in the restaurant and you order your pizza and you finish your pizza, once again, right while you're at your desk, you can complete the order, you can pay for it, you can add your tip, a message goes to the restaurant saying, you know, table number five just paid. And that saves a lot of time for the waiter or waitress from doing all that. The person's now doing it on their own on the smartphone. Uh, here's another example. Uh, Scott's Food and Pharmacy in the US has introduced biometrics, commerce transactions using your fingerprint. So the way this works is you set up an account, you say which credit or debit card you want to use, you say which loyalty card you have, and then whenever you do a transaction at Scott's Food and Pharmacy, you don't even have to have your wallet with you. You put the things in your shopping cart, you get to the cash register, you put your thumbprint down on a device, and it says, oh, that's Tom Vassos, and now we're gonna charge his MasterCard, and then I can quickly leave the store. So using biometrics to instantly do transactions. What they're finding with these systems is once people set up the account to do that, the amount that they purchase from that store goes up because it's very convenient. It doesn't matter if you have your wallet on you, you stop by on your way home, you put the fingerprint, you pick up milk, bread, whatever it is you want, uh, and then you're off. So it's very quick, it's convenient for the people. Uh, and they were even finding, for example, not just the customers using it, but even a lot of their employees used it because they only had a 20 minute coffee break and they always had to wait in line to buy the coffee and their sandwich or whatever it is they wanted. 
Now they're using it quite a bit more where they're using the fingerprint recognition and buying stuff at their coffee break, at lunchtime, at the end of the day, just before they go home. Uh, the other interesting thing they found with this particular one that, that surprised them, do you think people like the elderly might use a system like this? Let's say over 63 out of them. Okay, because they didn't think they would, but as they found out, that was a higher percentage was the elderly. And so they couldn't really figure out why, but they think maybe there was two reasons. One, the convenience. They didn't have to find the credit card and things like that. But they realized there was another benefit to the elderly, is they didn't want to come into the, uh, the store all the time carrying a lot of cash with them. So by using these, this system, they didn't have to carry cash, so better level of security of not getting robbed on their way out or whatever. And so they found that the elderly was using it quite a bit as well. Okay. I want that. Next example. Um, Coca-Cola has launched an SMS-enabled vending machine. So you can walk up to the vending machine, send it an SMS text message, and there's your can of Coke comes out of the machine. <laughs> okay. So a very simple, innovative way to do a transaction, uh, especially where you might not have cash with you. All right. That's it for the commerce methods. We'll come back to some more of those a little bit later. Let me just wrap up with the final top 10 list of customer support strategies. Number one, you can do loyalty rewards processing. Number two, physical goods shipping. So you can help track if you're shipping products to, uh, to your customers, they can track where the shipment is. Is it on the way? Did it arrive? Is it gonna come in two days, five days, one hour? Get instant notifications to a smartphone that tells me it's within 30 minutes of arriving to make sure you're at home so you can accept the package. So improving customer service level of physical goods. Number three, uh, shipping of digital goods. So I can ship you a book, an airline ticket, uh, you know, a ticket to a soccer game, whatever it is, I'm, I'm starting to now do it electronically. If you, you'll notice a lot of the daily deals sites, uh, those things are a real pain. I've used them quite a bit in the past, but you know, you get the daily deal and then you got to print the coupon off on your printer and then you got to make sure you call them to make a reservation. And it's a lot of hassle. And there's, I got a big pile of papers and I, and I always miss the deadline on these darn daily deals that you have to use it by the end of August. And well, wouldn't you know, I, I didn't get a chance to use it. Well, now what the daily deal sites are doing is they're sending you the electronic coupon now to your smartphone so you don't need to print it out at all and now potentially this becomes my ticket to pick up that item from the store. Uh, the example I gave earlier of Ikea, show me the installation instructions so I can figure out how to put this thing together. Another idea is technical support. Uh, Twitter does technical support via Twitter at a site called at Twelpforce. So they have thousands of people asking technical questions and thousands of people uh, uh, from this company that are going ahead and answering your questions via Twitter. Okay, so technical support via social media. But doing stuff like that's very costly, isn't it? Someone has to read it, they have to figure out what the answer is, they have to post the answer, we, you know, we hope it's right, etc. And that's very time consuming and expensive for companies to do that level of technical support. However, as we can see on number six, what more and more companies are doing is let's engage the community to answer each other's questions because our employees are busy in the store doing things. Let's let the customers answer each other questions. And when you build a community to do that, it's amazing how people, thousands of people could participate to help each other out. I don't know where they find the time, but they do and they'll answer questions because they're experts in that area or whatever and they'll do that. Secondly, uh, number seven is employee support. We can use mobile strategies uh, in order to uh, give the employee better support so that they can support the customer better. Uh, this is actually an example here where we can use augmented reality when a mechanic is about to you know, change a fan belt on a BMW 5 Series or something when they open up the trunk, 
they get the new part that they have to install, could have a QR code on it, and when they scan that QR code, it could be a video instructions of how to install a fan belt. Okay? Or for the customer to do it themselves, whatever. So once again, this is where we potentially provide employee support. Then we can do customer service, like I mentioned earlier, like the Air Canada Alert example. Then we can provide warranty support, and then we can provide product recall support in case there's a problem with the product. Okay? So that is our four top ten lists. Okay? So I wanted to do it kind of like in two steps. The first one, I introduced you to all of them. And now we're going to spend the rest of the day taking a look at certain ones in a little bit more detail, more examples, more things like that. Okay. Oh, and I thought I would wrap up with one kind of futuristic example. You've probably, I think, yeah, this one's from Google. Uh, wearable computers where you're going to be able to see uh, a map directions to get to your next locations or you could see your Facebook page and what people are saying to you or you could see your Twitter feeds or something like that so there's all kinds of uh, capabilities that might be built into these wearable computers as they say uh, let me just show you a, 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 t a funny TV co commercial that brings this to life a little bit uh, give me soybeans <laughs> The voice activated where the computer. You're okay. It may be far out. Uh, hi, Donna. Oh, yeah, the meeting was fine. But it's not far off. I'll be on the answer to flight. That's what we have to look forward to. Okay. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> By the way, did you notice the nail polish I have on that? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. Any questions? Especially ones that you think maybe somebody else is thinking of the same question. Because if you don't, I'm going to bore you with another 50 examples. Anyone? You can say your question in Spanish or English, by the way. I am fully 100% Spanish fluent. <laughs> Los locos somos más. <laughs> okay, no questions? Okay, let's go on. All right. Okay, we're going to get into uh, video marketing in a few minutes, um, and I'm going to show you an example here, but actually let me just launch it here first and see if I've got a good connection. Okay, I don't know if our video speed's going to be fast enough here, but I'll, I'll try it. If not, we'll, we'll move on to the next example. But, uh, one of the powerful methods of uh, marketing, especially using new devices like this, is video marketing. It's very powerful. You, you might think that, ah, oh, that screen's too small. I mean, what kind of a video can you see on there? But it actually is very powerful. It's very immersive. When people watch videos on their mobile devices, actually the completion rate of those videos, like whether they watch the whole thing or not, is actually 31% higher on a smartphone than when you start a video on your laptop. Because on your laptop, you got a lot of distractions, and yeah, you start the video and you go into something else. Uh, but 31% higher because why would they start the video unless they want it? And they're not going to switch to something else like you might on a laptop. So it can potentially be very powerful. Let me uh, just spend a, a few minutes on this example here of video marketing, and you'll see why in the end uh, about this fellow here that has a video. Oh, was it ready? His name's Nick Wojcik. I had no idea. 
my life, but I'm very thankful that I have my little chicken drumstick here. People freak out when they see me for the first time. It's so cool. I was at a water slide uh, all by myself. Everyone always said the bottom of the slide is not going to be waiting for other people to come down. Here I come and they're freaking out. They're like, you know, like this. And I was so tempted to look at myself and go, what happened? You know? There were times where I sort of looked at my life and thinking, well, I can't do this and I can't do that. And you keep on concentrating on the things that you wish you had or the things that you wish you didn't have. And you sort of forget what you do have. And there's no point, I believe, in my life where I wish I had arms legs, I wish I had arms legs, I wish I had arms legs, I wish I could help. But what I've seen in life are just a couple of key principles. And the first thing that I've seen is to be thankful. It's hard to be thankful, man. I tell you, when I was eight years old, I, I sort of summed up my life and thought, I'm never going to get married. I'm, you know, I'm not going to have a job. I'm not going to have a life of purpose. What kind of a husband am, am I going to be if I can't even hold my wife's head? It's a lie to think that you're not good enough. It's a lie to think that you're not worth anything. I love life. You know, so many people come and say, how come you smile so much? And I'm like, well, it's, it's, it's a long story. <laughs> but it's very simple at the same time. You see, it's very hard to smile sometimes in life. There are things that happen that you don't know and you don't understand. and You don't know if you're going to get through it. You know, you go through your storms in life and you don't know how long your storm's going to be. And today I want to share with you some principles that I've learned in my life that you can use for It's the hardest thing. But I realize that men I have hands to hold my wife's hand. But when the time comes, I'll be able to hold her heart. I don't need hands to hold her heart. You know, it is scary to know how many girls have eating disorders. It is scary to know how many people are just angry at life because of their situation at home and angry at others. Scary. So now how many people actually feel like they're worth nothing? Every single girl right here, right now, I want you to know that you are beautiful. You are gorgeous just the way you are. And your boys, you the man. On this DVD, I share my experiences in life of how I've overcome challenges and seeing a new, fresh perspective in life. To be thankful, to dream big, and to never give up. And Nick's dream came true. He just got married this year. There you go. Okay, so let's, let's take a look at some other examples. So before we go on, I thought it would be good to get a bit of a show of hands because I want to see if I can use some more industry examples of who we have in the room. So I'd just like to raise your hand when I call out your industry. I want to see who we have. Uh, first of all, raise your hand if anybody, if you're in financial services, banking, insurance, brokerage, anything like that. Okay, you can see each other, who you are. There's about seven or eight, nine of you. Okay, banking, etc. How about the telecommunications companies? Okay, four or five. Oh, we got about ten or twelve there. Great. Uh, raise your hand. Healthcare, hospitals, doctors, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so a couple folks here. Uh, media, TV, radio, newspaper. Whoa, the media's here today. Look at that. I better give you some more media examples. Okay, thirty or so people. Uh, education. Anyone from the university? Anyone? Nobody. We didn't invite the university. What happened? <laughs> <clears throat> Francisco, invite the university next time. Okay. Uh, retail industry. Okay, so a dozen of you there. Um, I, I probably have more examples from the retail industry than any industry, so A, I hope that will benefit you, 
But I think because we're all familiar with retail, because all of us shop, uh, hopefully those retail examples will help all of us understand better uh, how these apply. Uh, what about manufacturing? Anybody on the manufacturing side? Okay, four or five there. Uh, government? Okay, one or two there. You're not from the tax department, are you? No. <laughs> Just checking. Uh, how about services in general? Services? Okay, there's a big category, maybe 20 there. Okay, uh, which ones did I miss? Sorry? Uh, automobile, good one. And you raise your hand, automobile industry? You must be. Two, there you go, just two, okay. What kind of car are you gonna sell us today? MG, okay, you want to buy an MG right here. There you go. Did I miss any other industry? Real estate? Yes, does someone say real estate? Okay, raise your hand, real estate. Oh, we got a few real estate people. Okay, I got a lot of real estate examples too. If I don't tell you enough about real estate today, see me later and I got lots more examples. Okay? Okay, excellent. So, so I'm just going to backtrack a little bit. I'm going to kind of start from the beginning again. I'm going to, I'm going to give you some more highlights of, of some marketplace trends, and then I'm going to get back into the top 40 lists, uh, top 10 lists again, uh, and strategize. Uh, as part of the book I wrote, though, um, I put this uh, chapter together on how smartphones are the digital equivalent of a Swiss Army knife. In fact, I counted at least 99 devices that once you get a smartphone, you don't need those 99 other things, okay? So don't worry, I got it all figured out. So communication devices, of course, talking to people, email, text, uh, walkie-talkie, whatever it is, that this thing replaces it. Uh, personal life recorders, taking photos of your friends and videos, and you can take audio recordings, so it replaces the audio recorder. Uh, it's your social lifeline to link up to your friends on Twitter and Facebook and all that kind of stuff. Uh, something like 45% of Facebook's traffic is already coming from mobile devices. 55% of Twitter's traffic is coming from mobile devices. So that act, social media activity is transitioning to these devices. So we have to understand how they're being used and how we can get our brands visible in those environments. Uh, reading materials, so replacing your books. And if this screen's not big enough for you to read the book, but it actually is, it's, it's fantastic, you get a tablet instead, or an e-reader, uh, which, which could be even better for you. Uh, it's a personal organizer, organizer and a business organization with productivity tools, your to-do list, your, cal your calendar, your calendar reminders to tell you you got a meeting in 10 minutes, don't forget to go to the meeting, right? Um, it replaces legacy electronic devices. It could replace my printer if I get more and more stuff sent straight to my phone. It could replace my scanner. Why do I need a scanner when I can just take the photo of the sheet of paper and that's my scan of the product? I don't need that scanner anymore. So it's replacing those. Potentially fax machine because I could send a fax straight from this, fax that document to somebody else. Um, it can even replace a bunch of tools in your toolbox. Okay, get this. There's actually several apps on here to replace your real tools. There's one that has a measuring tape. If I just need to measure the size of this table, there's an app for that, okay? Uh, there's a level. If I'm hanging a picture, I can use my phone to make sure the picture's level. And if it isn't, it shows that little bubble as you're looking at it, okay? So, I don't think they have a screwdriver yet. <laughs> they have some. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll come back to that other one in a minute. Uh, the items in your purse. Anyone know what this replaces in your purse? No, it's not your lipstick. <laughs> Sorry? It could replace, yeah, all, your entire wallet, your credit cards, your debit cards, your coupons, your, your ID, it could it replace as well. What, what else? I'm thinking of something in a lady's purse. The mirror, the famous mirror app. You don't need the mirror anymore. There's a mirror app. You hold it up to your face, the camera, and now you can see your face and... Just a sec here. <laughs> All right. It's your personal shopping guide. And I'll show you the percentage of people that are now going into your retail stores 
scanning the barcode on that television set they want to buy and seeing that your competitor down the road is selling it for $20 less. Okay? So there's a lot more pain points in retail called showrooming where people come into your store, they waste half an hour of your sales rep's time and they ask you a thousand questions and then they scan the barcode and see it's $20 less on Amazon or down the road in the online or offline worlds, they say thank you very much and now I'm going to go down the street and buy it from somebody else. And I don't, I'm not going to waste half an hour of their time. <laughs> so this is very scary for retailers because it's providing much more perfect pricing information that we never had before. If you are going to buy a $150 television set, raise your hand if you go to ten, into 10 stores or more to compare prices. Okay, a couple people. How about five or more? How about three or more? Raise your hand if you would only go into one store and buy it. Okay, so a lot of people, because why? You could go to 10 stores, you'll get 20 bucks off. Who has time? Let those other people do it, right? Okay? So we didn't have that perfect pricing information, but now with these devices we do, and, that's, and that could be scary for retailers. Your personal travel, travel and entertainment guide. So being in a different city and using augmented reality to see what that building is and that building is, or meeting someone in a restaurant or walking into a restaurant, sitting down uh, and having a new Google app that you can point at the French menu and it'll translate it into Spanish for you. Okay, so personal traveler guide. Uh, personal teacher, access to all kinds of information instantly when you need it, at the moment you need it. The other night I was home from the grocery store and I bought a coconut, I was so excited. Do you think I could open up that coconut? Has anyone been successful opening up a coconut? Raise your hand if you have. <laughs> Nobody, I knew it. <laughs> Those coconuts are still in your fridge, aren't they? <laughs> right? But you can simply, on YouTube, how do you open up a coconut? And there it is right there. Oh, you have to do that? It's not even hard. You have, just have to crack it right on, the, right on the line that goes this way. You just tap it like that and the thing pops open. It's like magic. And it's all on the smartphone. <laughs> or maybe I could crack it with the smartphone. <laughs> okay, and then finally, it's going to replace your wife or husband. <laughs> what? You don't believe me. <laughs> All right. Okay, maybe it won't replace your wife, wife or husband. But do you know when you always say to your wife or husband, where's my keys, honey? Oh. Don't worry. There's a find your key app so that you know where it is. Honey, where's my cell phone? I can't find it. Can you call my cell phone? Because I need to hear it ring. Right? No, you don't do that. We, we have a find your car uh, 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 on Android. It's where's my droid. From another phone, I can key in the message, where's my droid? And a map comes back and says, oh, it's at the Home Depot that you were at an hour ago. <laughs> you left it at the cash register. So I can find my, my phone. Uh, I can find my car. You know, you, sometimes you get in a parking lot and you can't find your car? No problem. Remotely, I can use an app that starts sounding my horn. And then I can find my car in the parking lot. So I don't need my wife anymore. <laughs> All right, and a thousand other things. Okay, L let me just share a few more stats with you, just I think you'll find interesting. Uh, this recent research in the US is showing that over the past two or three years, how much time we spend in different environments on the web. And consumers are now spending more time on mobile apps than the web for the first time. So that's how much they're starting to get ingrained in our daily activities. Uh, Secondly, uh, this piece of research in Canada looked very specifically at 18 to 34 year olds and that they're spending the equivalent of one month a year on social networking, <laughs> okay? This group is, this is their daily lives. I mean, the average teen sends like 3,700 text messages a month or something, it's crazy. 86% uh, of them own a mobile phone, 43% of a smartphone which is 79% higher than adults. 
my daughter had a smartphone a year before I got my first one. Okay, because she was 14 at the time and she needed it. <laughs> okay. Um, mobile devices in terms of internet access compared to desktop users. Uh, by 2013, internet access for mobile devices will surpass uh, desktop computer users. Uh, what about smartphones versus feature phones? This is the statistics for smartphone sales and for feature phone sales in North America. Uh, by the end of 2011, uh, smartphone sales had surpassed feature phones, and, and that will continue to happen as the smartphone prices come down further and further. Okay? Okay, let's get back to our toolkit. As I mentioned, now we're on <laughs> pass two of each of the areas, and let's just come up with some more examples. As we're going through this section, uh, you have to ask a question. So as I'm going through an example and you want to ask a question, just wave your hand and ask, and I'll, I'll cover that topic in more detail. Otherwise, I'll probably go through the examples fairly quickly. Okay. So first question, how can I increase traffic to my stores? This may be one business objective that many retailers have where they want to drive traffic to their stores. Um, so Subway restaurants, like an example I used earlier, uh, is now using something called geo-targeted opt-in SMS text messages. What does that mean? That means Around each of their stores, they create something called a geofence. It's a geographic fence that goes around each store. It's like a virtual fence. And let's say it's something like, it's let's say 500 feet within the store. If you opt into this service, anyone that comes within 500 feet of the store, they get a text message. Hey, you're close to a subway. <laughs> You want one, don't you? Yeah. Okay. And they found some interesting things that as a result of that, their revenues went up from those people because they did stop by and pick up a sub on the way somewhere they were going. Uh, but another interesting thing they found out when they did this that people were telling them was, I didn't realize you even had a store in that plaza. <laughs> and when I got inside the geofence, it said, we have a store in that plaza. And so people were learning about Subway restaurant stores that they didn't even know existed, especially if they're traveling into a new part of, of town or whatever. So there's some specific benefits that companies are getting by setting up these, these geofences. Okay. Uh, Target does something. They introduce something called a text-to-get instant coupon. Once again, if you opt into the list, you arrive to the Target store, and instead of picking up one of those flyers, you now get the message to your phone saying, guess what, here's our flyer of five things we have on sale today uh, that you might want to consider. Orange juice is off, you know, 30% off, whatever. Now think about this for a second, because the power underneath that app is the power of the analytics information that that app is collecting. Because I might have a hundred different things I want to sell the customer, but how do you decide which five you want to tell them about? Because you don't want to send a hundred to their smartphone. How do you think you decide which five to tell them about? Well, one approach might be, you know their purchase history, and you know they buy diapers, because they have a child, so you might want to first tell them about the stuff they buy. Don't forget to pick up some diapers for the baby. The second thing you might want to do, though, because you have the power of analytics, is use the power of analytics to suggest other purchases. Maybe purchases that that, that customer doesn't normally buy. So that customer mostly just buys clothes from you, but you know they've never bought stuff out of your grocery section. Let's give them a really deep discount on some bananas, because we want them to start getting used to buying groceries, not just clothes, at our store. I'll, it's amazing the power of these analytics, and I'll, I'll, I'll share a story with you that I think you'll find interesting, was Target does an amazing job of powerful analytics to predict future purchases. And it's interesting because they, they can actually use this technology of analytics to predict if you are pregnant or not. 
tell you truthfully. How do you think they might know that you're pregnant? Can anyone guess what kinds of products you would buy that might give them a hint that you're pregnant? Vitamins. Sorry? Vitamins. Vitamins, that could be one, but everyone might buy vitamins, but what else might you buy? <laughs> Maybe if you bought a couple of baby clothes and, and in the last 20 years you've never bought a baby clothes, but it could be a gift for somebody too, right? So you don't know for sure, but that might be one if you bought one piece of baby clothing. But no, I'm trying to predict when they're pregnant. They might not buy the baby clothes till later, right? What else might you buy? Does anyone know the name of the medication? What's the medication you buy in case you get morning sickness? Okay. So there might be a medication for morning sickness. If this person is starting to come in and buying morning sickness pills every week, guess what? They might be pregnant. So if you think they might be, don't tell them, are you pregnant? <laughs> don't say that, I don't recommend it. But along with those other four coupons you're showing them, you might want to make the fifth one a baby stroller. I'm going to give you a discount on a baby stroller. And it's interesting because they started doing a little bit of this where they started mixing in some baby products where the analytics told them the person might be pregnant. And they actually got an angry phone call from a father saying, I'm upset, you're sending my daughter this pregnancy-related stuff, and don't do that, right? Anyway, as it turned out, two months later, the dad called back again and said, I apologize, I found out she was pregnant. <laughs> True story. <laughs> so you've got to be careful of the power of analytics. It's not something we will spend a lot of time today but every single one of the 40 stages that I'm describing you today has an analytics angle to it. You can measure everything from the number of times the person visited your app to the number of times they checked in to the number of time they arrived in your geofence at your store. The power of analytics across all of those things is totally amazing. So, Think about that as you roll out the different strategies. How can you harness the power of analytics to raise the, the level of what you're able to do for your clients and, and get a better benefit for your own company? Okay, uh, retailers. So we have some both retailers and auto, auto dealers in the room. Uh, a lot more options on the auto dealer side for store locators because once again, I'm not gonna buy a, an MG on my smartphone. Okay, I still want to try it, I still want to test drive it, things like that. However, let's offer them things like a store locator, a dealer locator, so that they can know exactly where the closest MG dealer is. Let's give them an incentive. If you test drive our car today, we're going to give you $20 of groceries. It might be a, a powerful promotion. Because if you can get someone at the dealership, in the car, driving it, that could be a, a, a $20, might be an inexpensive marketing tool, or $10, whatever, to encourage uh, people coming into the dealership. Mm -hmm. Another popular one for auto dealerships is click to call. Because once again, you're not gonna buy it on the smartphone, but you got a lot of questions. Tell me about that MG, how much horsepower does it have? Uh, how big's the trunk? Because I don't know, is, is it really big enough to store my suitcase to get to the airport? And, so different questions that you're going to have, and then that salesperson hopefully can talk me into going into the dealership. Another popular one was uh, getting people to like the product so that all of your Facebook friends can see that. And people like to say they like cars. They have a personal relationship. Oh, I like the BMW, right? or I like the Corvette, or whatever. So people like to associate themselves with certain automobiles. And therefore, hey, like us on Facebook and tell your friends how you're sophisticated and you like BMWs, whatever it is. So there's more of that kind of thing going on in this, in this sector. Uh, what about meeting different objectives? Uh, Michaels is a big craft, crafts dealer, but you know my stage of the top 10 ways of doing commerce transactions, the Michaels store chain, they don't do any commerce on mobile devices. They do all of these other things. So for example, they try to drive store traffic with mobile coupons and weekly flyers and a store locator and store events. They want to get you into the store. 
That's where you're going to make the purchases. Uh, they do cross-selling. So if you looked up this product, they show you the other three products that go with it. So there's some upselling. Uh, they do some viral marketing encouragement by getting you to post uh, and share things on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, they try to increase sales by showing you videos of how their products are being used. Uh, and they have some mobile barcode scanning where you can create your own shopping list by scanning the barcodes and next time you go to Michael's, you have your shopping list of 10 things that you want to pick up. So they don't do any sales, but they have these other objectives when they implemented their strategy. How can I eliminate or reduce lineups? Uh, stop and shop supermarket, similar to the aisle buyer video I showed you earlier, is one, once again, where you can scan the items, pay for it on your smartphone, and then show the people at the door or at the self-checkout self counter at the door that you, in fact, purchased all, these, all of these items. Another example of line busting, this one uses biometrics, uh, the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Service. Uh, so I, I was part of this service a few years back when I did a lot of traveling where you set up an account, you show them your passport, they do a credit check on you, they do a, a, a background check if you've been in jail or whatever, and once they're comfortable that you're, a, you're a, a, an upstanding Canadian citizen in my case, that now when there's that long 45 minute lineup to get through the airport, I could walk up to the kiosk, just like the pilots do, put my hand on there, it recognizes that it's Tom Vassos, and then I can skip the 45 minute lineup and, and go further along down to get my plane. See? So Tom Vassos is very important, I just want you to know. <laughs> okay, how can I improve my business processes? So once again, uh, we're trying to eliminate the printers. So there's different solutions out there that will send you a ticket or a purchase confirmation or something to your smartphone. This becomes your, your piece of paper that shows you had that. So once again, instead of getting an e-ticket from the airline and printing it off and showing that piece of paper to the person at the counter, now Air Canada and many other airlines send me a QR code or a barcode. In many cases, it's a QR code. It appears on my smartphone and when I get to the airport, I simply scan that there and then they say, okay, go through, because we see that's your, that's your boarding pass, basically. So your, board, your entire boarding pass becomes electronic. What about going to a soccer game? Once again, they can send you the soccer ticket. It appears as a QR code or a barcode. You get to the soccer stadium, and once again, the lineup's quicker because everyone just scans their smartphones and gets into the stadium. Okay? Marea Roja. Okay, so that's probably enough of me talking. I'm going to do a little bit of a workshop uh, with everybody here. And so let me just uh, put this up and, and think. I want each of you to think about how you're going to apply this to your organizations. Uh, and we're going to get into groups, and I'll show you how we'll break out. We're just going to spend maybe five minutes on this, this exercise. But in your groups, what I want you to discuss is, A, say what kind of business you're in, and say to the group members whether or not you have some kind of a pain point that you think is something you might want to consider addressing. And think about, out of all the examples I've given you so far, can some of these technologies be used to address those pain points. Uh, what customer needs are you addressing? What business objectives might it address for your own organization? Uh, and can you address these through some of the technologies that we've talked about, primarily through your own organization? So that's, we're gonna do that just to give us a bit of a break and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna, how, how we're gonna split this up and, and like I said, just five minutes or so. Okay, so the groups, you guys are gonna turn around and we got this group of five here and we got a group of five there. Okay, so you know which group you're with. These two here, we got five, five there. And that's these two tables here, so you guys turn around, five and five. And we've got these five here, and we've got to do the only thing over there. 
con el no tienes que bajar, porque no tienes hasta que viene. Para el con Blackberry. Yo lo que hago es que me hago Blackberry. No sé. Hago como si fuera a agregar un contacto. Invitarme a tu escaneo de un pueblo de abajo. Sí, sale. Sí, sí. O sea. Si me uno por aquí, es que digo, yo nunca lo hago. Ah, sí, sí, sí. Ah, sí, ya lo que ya lo pero no sabe eso no dije pero no es que la aplicación para
Because if you don't raise your hand, I'm going to point at somebody, so you better raise your hand. Okay, we have one here. Um, well, um, Could you stand up and say it loudly, and that way we'll... Do we have a microphone? Yeah, here we go. We even have a microphone. Modern technology. Gracias. Thank you. Basically, we have different point of view in a different market here. We have uh, tourist telecommunication and social media. So basically, we see um, the, the need what the people have in Panama and Latin America is basically the customer service. Um, most of the companies here provide a customer service because it's not the best one or the better way to communicate or to provide an access to the people to come and explain the, the, the issues or something like that. So um, how the tourists in Panama is increasing and growing up. Um, we see on a different option with apps, a web page or services where they can provide a better service with less investment. So basically, uh, our internal discussion was related with, the, with the, that service or uh, different models of ways to provide an access to the customer to claim issues okay. or comments or solutions to That's us great. and then we can provide them. Now that you discovered the pain point, you've got people coming in from other countries, 
did you come up with anything where you can think of how some of these technologies might be used specifically to address those tourists coming into the city? Did you think of anything specific? Because if not, I'd like to share where so things example, was what, what they uh, What we understood was, that, for example, the SIP card. Because we don't have that in Panama. And Sorry, the what card? The SIP card. The SIP card service. Oh, okay. Or something related with the um, select your car or pick up your car before you come here or something like that. Okay, great. Thank you very much. How about a hand for our first group here? So let me give a, a partial answer to that as well, uh, because tourism is a big part of Panama's business, I'm sure. And how could you apply some of these technologies to achieve the objective of making a more pleasurable trip to Panama City? So let me share an example with you that I'm familiar with. Uh, it was one that they did in New York, and uh, you probably heard of Central Park in New York. Uh, what they did was, uh, they turned New York Central Park into what they called the World Park. And what they did was they put QR codes all around the park in different places. And when you walked around the park and scanned that code, it brought the park to life. So what it did, for example, when you scanned something at, uh, you know, maybe beside a bridge or something, it would tell you, oh, thanks for your interest in this bridge. And it was built in 1832. And, and you know somebody died while they're making it or you know whatever the story around the making of that bridge was when you walked further down into the park you came to like a bandstand where they have bands playing but you know that day there's probably nobody there but when you point that at the bandstand using augmented reality they would then all of a sudden have a symphony start where you could see the New York Symphony that was playing there three months earlier and telling you about uh, and, and you could listen to the music and sit there in the park for a while and listen to the symphony play or whatever. You could then go further along in the park and they had some uh, QR codes you could scan that played video clips of movies where they filmed it in the, that exact location. So remember in Home Alone where uh, Macaulay Culkin is in the park and, and the, the bum is with him there and he's got the birds all around him? You get to that park bench right there and it brings it to life and says, and all of a sudden there's Macaulay Culkin sitting at the bench that you're sitting on, and you can see exactly that scene in the movie. So some very powerful techniques like that to bring to life what we want the tourists to understand, which you can't really do with a little sign that has a few words on it, that this is where the Home Alone movie was made. I mean, it just doesn't have the same impact, okay? So there's just a simple example of how we can take that business objective or a customer need and use some of the technologies to apply it. Okay? Who wants to share the next example? You have one there? Okay. Can we have the microphone passed down? Oh, there's... Do you want to go next? or? Okay, here we go. Ya hay varias industrias que están eh, utilizando, entonces pues, el reto para no es 
que de cada una de las industrias que te van a ir presente, pues empecemos para que en algún momento dado lo que son las telefonía móvil, pues puedan ser utilizadas para los negocios. Ok, for the benefit of my English speaking people in the room, could someone quickly translate that? Who's as good as English? I need a translator. Come on, I must have a volunteer. You want to try what she said? No? no? Could I get a translation device? That, that would help you, wouldn't it? Because I only understand understood 80% of what she said. Okay. okay, what was the main point of her message? Anybody? Come on, somebody here? She said uh, Trifty is having problems with their international reservations, right? International reservations for people that come, uh, for tourists that come to Panama. And when do they come, when they come here, what is the difficulty? Did she say whether it's when they get here they have to line up at the rental counter and things like that, or did she mention what the pain point was? Uh, <laughs> you ask her, ask her. El problema le cae cuando la gente llega aquí a hacer la fila para su reserva y lo tienen. Agilizar el trámite del cliente cuando está llegando, antes de llegar, con una confirmación para tenerle todo listo. Más que nada, una, una confirmación. Ok, so uh, basically that the tourist has a confirmation, a previous confirmation when he gets to the counter. También hay otro problema, que es que muchas de las plataformas igual no pueden funcionar debido a que en Panamá sigue utilizándose los aparatos, los aparatos más sencillos o los smartphones tipo Blackberry. Uh -huh. o sea, hay una gran cantidad de Blackberry, muy poca gente, menos del 20%, según lo que dicen algunos proveedores de telefonía, utilizan smartphones eh, como los, los iPhone, los de Samsung, que no, que no más avanzado. O sea, hay muy poca accesibilidad a, a los usuarios. Ese es lo que So uh, let me try to answer that in a couple of different ways. Because I think you're making some very good points there that applies to a lot of people in the room. The first thing is that you've got many different kinds of devices and you try to bring something to the market that that person can listen to it or see it on the Blackberry but it doesn't work on the iPhone or vice versa, the Android, etc. So that's one of the issues. The other issue is Customers don't think to use that technology. They're not used to pulling out their smartphone. They're used to just coming into the store and talking to somebody. Okay, so it, it might take years to change people in terms of doing that on a consistent basis. So I have a couple of strategies and ideas for you to address that. One is, it might take months or years, and therefore first, focus on the use of the, these technologies for your employees and let them use the technology and then they can serve the end customer. So that's one simple strategy. Another simple strategy is, once again, because they're not used to using the technology, you have to address something that I call the what's in it for me factor. That means, unless you do something for them, they don't care. You have to save them money, you have to save them time, You have to give them something they couldn't get any other way. And then you have to tell them about it. So the first few times to try to do that, when you're in your store or at the rental counter at Thrifty, you might literally have to have a speech that says, by the way, you just waited in line 30 minutes to get your car. You probably didn't know we have a smartphone app and you could have skipped the lineup. Here's a piece of paper that shows you where you can download it, and next time you come to Panama City, use the app and you don't have to wait in line. Guess what, 95% of the people won't know you have that app. And so now all of a sudden, you're making the awareness of that app 
visible to the customers out in the marketplace. Okay. So there's a lot of steps you might have to manually take to convince people to use it, but if you give them the what's in it for me factor, and skipping the lineup is a good one, then they will use it the next time they come. But you have to tell people about it, the people on your rental counter have to tell people about it. When people call your call center and reserve the car or whatever it is, at the end of the call from the call center, they should be saying, and by the way, did you know we have an app for that? Okay, so then you're starting to raise awareness of telling people. You can put it on posters, you can put it on signage, you can put it on your cards, I mean, wherever it is that you get the visibility for it. The second technical issue that you were talking about was the multiple disparate different platforms that are out there. So there's a couple of solutions for that because the problems in the past we've had with mobile devices is you build it for the iPhone and only the iPhone can use it. Blackberry can't use it, Android can't use it, right? So now, not only do we already have a small number of people in Panama trying to use your program, but now you have to tell two thirds of them, sorry, it doesn't work for you, it only works for iPhone users. You'd never want to do that. Okay. So there's two solutions to that. One solution is there are platforms in the marketplace, one of them is called Kony, K-O-N-Y, where you can build your app once, and this platform called Kony will take the app and convert it into an app for the iPhone, Android, and Rim Blackberry. Now you can reach everybody, okay? So you have just eliminated the problem of not reaching two-thirds of the population. Now you can reach everybody. So that is one solution, a cross-platform development tool like Kony, where you can build it once and everybody can use it. The second solution from a technology standpoint is raise your hand if you've heard of something called HTML5. Anybody? HTML5. Not, not too many people. Okay, we don't have technical people in the room. That's okay. Are you the developer? Yes. There you go. Ask him all the HTML5 questions later. Is that okay? Uh, <laughs> and you'll write the app for them too, right? Yes. See? We've got an app developer. He'll, by lunchtime, you'll have your app written. Okay? Very easy. HTML5 is the new standard coding mechanism that is used on mobile browsers. Very powerful. So you have two choices when you bring function to the market. You can build it in a cross-platform environment like Kony and run it as an app. That means people have to download your app, open up your app, and use your app. Option B, is you don't write an app at all. You build a mobile website using HTML5, and instead of going to an app, people go to the browser on their smartphone. Once they go to the browser, they can go to your website, m.thrifty.com, which is a bit of a branding trick here if you land like M dot on the front of your domain name. That tells people it's your mobile site. So you create a mobile site called m thrifty.com and now people can just go to the browser it doesn't matter whether they have Android iPhone or Rip Blackberry and HTML5 will feed them a beautiful page regardless of which three platforms that you're on there's advantages and disadvantages to diff the different solutions HTML5 on the browser or an app a custom app for each environment talk to your local developer and he'll help you decide What's the best approach for your for your needs? Do I get twenty percent for that? Twenty-five. <laughs> See, he's negotiating at least. <laughs> Actually, that reminds me of a story, and I I, I share this one with you. I, I, I'm going to share this story with you, but you can't tell anyone this story. Can everyone promise me that you won't tell anyone? Okay. I was in this bar once. And it's, it, you reminded me of the story. And I met this very good looking girl at the bar. So we were chatting and I think I was doing pretty good, you know, we were getting along. And, and uh, anyway, we had a couple of drinks and stuff and it was close to the end of the night and I said to her, I said, can I ask you a personal question? She said, sure. I said, if I gave you a million dollars, would you go to bed with me? 
<laughs> so she, now she knows how rich I am. <laughs> she said, well, of course, for a million dollars, I can go to bed with you, Tom Bezos. <laughs> so I said, wow, that's, that's fantastic. Thank you. I said, could I ask you another personal question? She said, what? I said, if I gave you $200, would you go to bed with me? <laughs> she looked at me, she says, you think I am? I said, well, we've already established that, now we're just negotiating. <laughs> <laughs> you won't tell that story to anyone. <laughs> All right. Who wants to give us a third example? Did I give you a good answer on that? Okay, okay. If I didn't, see me at Coffee Break. Okay. Who wants to give us our number three example? Wow. It's 1234, we're doing good. Okay, we've got somebody in the back. Can we get a microphone there, please? See, it works better when I get my translation done. You can speak in Spanish if you prefer.
pero la seguridad y la tranquilidad, ¿no? Poder educar al cliente en eso. Ese es el tema. Use the microphone for us, sir. Gracias. Es que ahí yo estaba la realidad de tú. Usted tiene dos movimientos, que son multimax.net y multimax.net. Lo que pasa es que cuando nosotros empezamos, o sea, hace ya varios años se creó la página multimax.net, eso era como un catálogo, donde solamente podías ver los, eh, los productos que teníamos, pero si querías un precio tenías que llamar a telemercadeo y telemercadeo te decía cuánto costaba o las características. Ahora nosotros... Las personas están acostumbradas a esa página, nosotros no vamos a perderla. Mientras tanto, estamos haciendo lo que es el e-commerce. El e-commerce se llama en Ultimax Componente. Eso es solamente momentáneo. Ahorita, si tú entras en Ultimax Componente, hay una forma de entrar. O sea, te vas a comprar el link, te va a tirar, te va a reaccionar a en Ultimax Componente. Pero esto es temporal. Mientras terminamos de eh, adecuar, de diseñar todo el portal de e-commerce para que sea todavía más amigable a lo que es actualmente, entonces el eh, dominio en Multimax Control desaparecería quedando solamente en Multimax Control. Okay. Gracias. Gracias. Thank you. You brought up some very good points I'd like to address, but first I want to establish that I get 20% of your sales too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you brought up some interesting points which, uh, which give me some areas I think we should talk about briefly, uh, but I'll cover more detail in the afternoon. We're going to break for lunch at about 1 o'clock if that's okay. But you mentioned a couple of very specific things about uh, Facebook and social media and turning that into a commerce platform. So there's all kinds of approaches on Facebook you can take not just to get friends, but to get people liking your product. So when they say, I like the Gap, or whatever it is, all of a sudden my 500 friends see that I like the Gap. So the like button is a very powerful way to get visibility across all of your friends. So even if you reach a thousand people that like your product, that's not where the power is. It's not in the power of reaching those thousand people it's in the power of reaching their 50,000 friends. So that's the part that's very powerful. So the like button is one. Another one is creating fan pages, where people become a fan of your product. Once again, for, for them to associate with you in that way, you have to have one of two things. Either you are a brand, which is like a, a Rolex watch company or a BMW car, where they're proud to say, I like Rolex or BMW because they want to see their friends to see how expensive their taste is or whatever. But the other way is that sometimes you have to pay them off. That if you like us on Facebook, we're going to give you $3 off on your next purchase. Okay? So now we're buying likes and fans and things like that. And, and quite frankly, that's what a lot of companies do out there is that they give you a little bit of an incentive to let you associate yourself with that brand in that way. Okay? Uh, the other interesting thing you brought up, oh, the other thing I'll mention about Facebook as well is uh, not just the fact that they have about 900 million users or something, but the power they have in the statistics about those users that you can have very targeted Facebook campaigns that don't reach 900 million people, that just reach 1,000 people in exactly your target market in the Panama City area that are between 20 and 30, or, or that just got engaged, or whatever the criteria is that makes them your target customer. And I'm gonna share some examples with you of that this afternoon. So I'll, I'll leave that to this afternoon. The other part that you mentioned though was the safety of doing commerce transactions. I'll, do, I'll cover that this afternoon as well, but I wanted to quickly answer it now. And you're right, people don't want to put their credit card online. They don't want to buy stuff on Facebook. Facebook is for them to talk to their friends. So don't bug me, right? And so it's almost that attitude. And, but even if you do have something that might be of interest to someone, there's a lot of issues to overcome. There's the security of the credit card information getting passed. There's the security of whether you're going to store that information 
properly. There's a lot of examples of companies like Sony and others that lost hundreds of thousands of credit cards because their systems got hacked and all of a sudden that information got revealed. So there's security issues that customers have. But guess what? When we get into the commerce section, there is several technology solutions that address, that address that. And I'll just give you a couple of simple ones right now. First of all, it's not just the level of security, it's the level of perceived security. And whether they think it's secure or not, it doesn't matter the reality, perception is everything. I'll give you a simple example. Uh, a few years back, Microsoft did some really interesting research where they were analyzing co commerce purchases. So people were putting stuff in their shopping cart and then they were getting to the order page and you filled out your credit card number and stuff like that and then you submitted your order. And, and there wasn't a lot of people that wanted to do that. You know, they're uncomfortable. Do I really know this company? Do I really want to send my credit card number on the internet, etc.? Mm -hmm. Then they did an experiment on that same order page they added the logos of the credit card companies. A big MasterCard logo, American Express, Visa. The order rate went up by 20%. Was it more secure? No, it just had three pictures of three credit cards. But when people saw that order page, they just felt more comfortable. Oh, it's Visa behind this. They, it must be safe. Visa wouldn't put their credit card picture there if it wasn't safe, would they? Okay. So it's just perception, and if you put the credit card logos, that could be a powerful way to appear more secure. There's also services out there on the internet and on mobile apps, like, I think it's M Trust or N Trust, where they have a process you go through if you want to do online credit card transactions, that they check out your systems to make sure everything's proper and your, your credit card numbers are encrypted, etc. And when that is the case, and they can prove it, you can put their brand on your order page. So we use the Entrust system, we are secure, we are safe, our credit card numbers are encrypted, don't worry, you can do the transaction. So that raises the brand awareness. Creating strategic alliances raises the perception. So for example, if you are doing all your processing through, what's the biggest bank in Panama? Is there a bank of Panama City? Okay, whatever. What is it? That. Okay, that one. Uh, so imagine if you were a small business and you do all your banking at that institution. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe they would let you put your logo on there to say all transactions on this site go through this bank. And once again, the people in Panama City, they, they don't know your company as much as they know that bank. And if you say all of our transactions are processed through that bank, then maybe that will make them more comfortable. So there's just different techniques to raise the trust level of getting people to do those con uh, transactions. Finally, no matter what you do, some people will never do it. They, they won't put it on, no matter what, no matter how good the deal is, no matter how good, no credit card, on internet, period, no matter what. No problem, guess what? We have other systems in place and technologies that you can place your order for this product on a mobile device, don't give us your credit card number. We will charge it on your telecom carrier bill. So the next time you get your, your, your cell phone bill at the end of the month, it'll say $42 for all your phone calls, and there's an extra $10 for that sweater you bought. You didn't have to put your credit card number. It got charged to your telecom bill, and you feel comfortable doing that. So there's different techniques, and when we get into the commerce section, I'll share with you some of those techniques. Okay, we have time for one last example. Does anyone want to volunteer? Okay, any final volunteers or sh should I switch to my more examples? Going once, going twice. Oh, we had someone just under the wire. Okay. Who has the microphone?
Okay, más que un comentario, es también como una pregunta, porque en el caso nosotros somos eh, una radio, nosotros vendemos un producto que no está en gente, ¿verdad? Entonces es un poquito como, no más difícil, pero eh, aplicar el tipo de tecnología. A nosotros, en el caso de nuestras emisoras, que somos un grupo de emisoras, y de, una, de un periódico online también que tenemos, o sea, todo es eh, virtual, por decirlo así. Este, la parte del código es lo que más nos ha llamado la atención de poderlo aplicar, ¿verdad? Y poder darle servicio tanto a nuestros oyentes, que son nuestros principales, ¿verdad? Eh, digamos, eh, eh, usuarios, ¿verdad? O fans o lo que sea pero también a nuestros clientes, que son los que nos compran pauta y también tenemos que darle un buen servicio. Entonces ese código, eh, hay varios ejemplos que fueron como de repente el código por poderlo aplicar y que la gente lo pueda escanear y los oyentes puedan recibir ofertas, ¿verdad? Premios, perdón, premios por eh, eh, escanear el código, eh, el, el, ¿cómo es? QR, ¿verdad? QR, QR, ¿verdad? Este, que nuestros oyentes puedan recibir premios, ¿verdad? Por, por, y a nuestros clientes, ¿verdad? Que tenemos también dar un servicio a nuestros clientes, que son los que nos compran pauta, poder dar un servicio más, más eh, rápido, como que cuando nos compran la pauta, es que, eh, le mandamos nuestro código en la factura o en alguna cosa, y poder inmediatamente que tengan el horario de pauta, de donde va, en el, el horario de donde va a salir su pauta. ¿Verdad? Y ya ellos tienen su horario inmediatamente. Son cosas que se nos han ocurrido en el caso de nosotros que somos radio y no sé si el señor Ramón quiera. ¿No quiere? Que parte de nuestro grupo. Pero sí, era más, más que todo eso, que nuestro producto es como que diferente al de muchos de ustedes. No sé si lo estamos aplicando bien, usted me, me dará ejemplos. Sure. So a couple of things come to my mind with yours. I mean, there's a lot of opportunities for the marriage between radio and especially social media. I'll, I'll make a mobile phone comment there, but on the social media side, there's an opportunity to have a community for everything you do on the radio to build a community on a Facebook page or followers via Twitter or whatever. So for example, for every conversation that you have, okay, for this radio show, we're interviewing Dr. Such and Such, and the topic is medical, oper uh, facial operations uh, to give you a nose job. Okay, you're gonna get a smaller nose. And so you're, you have that doctor on the radio show, you're, you're answering questions, everything. We can create an entire community on the social media side so that everyone can have a two-way interaction because a regular radio show, it's just you talking to everybody. You can't hear anybody. You're just talking to them. It's one way. But by introducing the social media element, now it becomes a two-way conversation. And all of a sudden, people on that Facebook page, which is associated with that particular radio broadcast, can ask questions and how much does it cost and how dangerous it really is it to get a nose job and, And is it really safe? And is there risks involved? And not only that, but as they're asking those questions, you could be providing the questions to the interviewer. Oh, we have a Twitter question. Oh, we have a Facebook question. And now all of a sudden it becomes a live two-way interaction with the audience rather than a one-way broadcast. So there's many things like that that could open up and change what our interactions with the world might look like as a direct result of what the technology can do for us. I mean, we can go even further though, for, but for example, a radio show could build an entire mobile app so that instead of, once again, having to listen to it on your radio, you can listen to the radio shows anytime simply by loading the app, no matter where you are, as long as you have internet access, and live, real time, I can now access it this way in places I didn't have access before. So that's basically what we're trying to open up, is reaching people in new places, because right now, your target audience, I don't know what it is, but let's say it might be 60% people in their cars while they're listening to the radio, and the other 40% while they're in their home. But what about when they're in the park? Or what about when they're in the office? Or what about when they're somewhere else? 
now we potentially open up the capability to communicate with them uh, in those other environments. I'll give you a simple example that is not in the radio industry, but in another industry. A company, uh, that uh, coffee shop, that replaced their cash registers with cell, with cell phones. So when you came in, you bought your coffee, you signed on the smartphone, and they processed the transaction. And that was great, but then they realized one thing. Hey, we can, we can process all our transactions on our smartphone. That means we could introduce a whole new business model because we don't just have to sell coffee in the coffee shop. We could go to the park every Saturday afternoon and, and sell coffee, if it's legal that is, and by the way, you want a coffee, just sign here. It's all wireless connected, and there's your coffee for $1.50. And it introduced a whole new business model for them uh, to do transactions in a different environment than they were before. Or they could go to a stadium or a school where they were having an event at the school or whatever it is that we can now turn our business into a mobile commerce business based on the possibilities that these technologies open up. Okay? So I, I probably didn't answer your question fully, but hopefully we, we had some, some ideas there. And there was one more example we wanted to have right here somewhere. There we go. It's almost lunchtime, most of you have to talk about it. Buenos días, Servicio Hospitalar, en este caso Hospital Nacional. Para nosotros definitivamente estamos convencidos en la mañana de hoy que a través pues, de este sistema podemos convertirnos en un aliado para todos ustedes. Número uno, sentimos pues, que a través de, de esta herramienta podemos hacerle llegar a cada uno de ustedes pues, nuestro directorio de médicos, en donde ustedes, por ejemplo, en un momento dado vayan a utilizar un gastro, un cardiólogo, alguna referencia. Sabemos que la información que nosotros como hospital podemos manejar en un momento dado va a ser muy sensitiva para todos ustedes. Es información que, de hecho sea de paso, Tal vez en el momento no sentimos que la vamos a utilizar, pero sí sabemos que es importante que la carguemos en el celular. Así que consideramos que es oportuna una herramienta que le permita que a todos ustedes dentro del celular puedan tener eh, este, este tipo de información. Número uno, el tema médicos. Número dos, el poder crearles eh, como especie de una plataforma donde el paciente, que son dos temas sensitivos en el momento de un hospital, la, el ingreso y la salida del paciente. En el caso del ingreso, bueno, si nosotros creamos una plataforma en donde ustedes nos brindan su información, es, va a ser un proceso que nos va a agilizar la entrada del paciente. Número uno, vamos a poder hacerle preguntas, como a qué son alérgicos, en caso de emergencia, a quién llamamos, porque puede ser que en un momento dado voluntariamente ustedes van al hospital de una forma programada, pero en otra ocasión puede que lleguen sin que nadie lo sepa. ¿Cierto? Entonces, este formulario, esta plataforma nos va a permitir a nosotros, como quien dice, conocerlos antes de que ustedes puedan utilizar los servicios nuestros. Así que es, es, una, es una oportunidad muy buena de poder utilizar una herramienta como esta. Ahora bien, eso para los, que, los clientes que ya existen dentro del hospital y que utilizan con frecuencia. Los que no, igualmente, igual nos llenarán el formulario porque no saben que en cualquier momento nos pueden utilizar. ¿Cierto? El momento de la salida del paciente... Por ejemplo, nos pareció muy oportuno que dentro de las habitaciones con una aplicación ustedes puedan pagar en línea. ¿Por qué? Porque le permite al paciente evitar esa situación de tener que eh, dirigirse a caja, eh, en un momento dado eh, no manejan efectivo, el tema de la tarjeta, ¿cierto? Entonces, ofrecerle al paciente la oportunidad de que a través de internet dentro de la misma institución que ya existe, poder ustedes pagar en línea. Entonces, a partir de la fecha, cuando ustedes reciban el app de la aplicación, el código hospital nacional, los invito para que nos agreguen y entonces puedan recibir toda su información. ¿Cierto? Gracias. Buen día. Just a quick clarification. Can I ask you a question? Um, for part of your hospital operations, do you have to do commerce transactions where people pay for certain services, or is it all covered under the healthcare? Do you have to do commerce transactions? Correcto. Hay dos tipos de pacientes. El paciente particular, que es el que puede, el que paga, obviamente, que no tiene ninguna cobertura de aseguradora, y el paciente que tiene la cobertura de su aseguradora, pero siempre debe pagar un copago. 
O sea, siempre debe pagar algo, aunque sea un porcentaje muy pequeño, excepto de que tenga una full cobertura por alguna situación X en donde no tenga que pagar absolutamente nada. Entonces, estamos hablando de dos pacientes. El particular, que obviamente paga de su monedero, y el paciente con la aseguradora, que de todas maneras igual tiene que pagar un porcentaje de la cuenta, ¿cierto? Eh, igualmente, pues sí sentimos que la aplicación nos permitiría en esta plataforma para que cuando usted, señor Vaso, regrese a Panamá, usted en cualquier no, emergencia... No, 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 no. Usted estará seguro de que como usted llenó la plataforma la información previamente, sabemos a qué aseguradora usted tiene cobertura sabremos a qué es alérgico, sabremos a quién llamar en caso de emergencia y sabremos a quién cargarle la cuenta si usted en este momento no tiene dinero cuando vino a Panamá. ¿Cierto? I've made a decision. I'm not going to visit you, I'm going to visit Thrifty Rental Cards. Gracias. Thank you. Uh, great points. I'm, I, I think I have some great examples for you. First of all, this afternoon I have some specific examples that I think you'll like in the healthcare industry. Being able to book a doctor's appointment, finding a particular specialist, seeing what their calendar availability is. So there's a whole range of things like that that could be built into an app to save the hundreds of phone calls you get. When's the doctor available? What's the appointment? Phone calls going back and forth. Like it's all very time consuming versus some type of automated process to provide that information. Uh, secondly, I can't remember if I have the video or not. I think it, if I do, I'll show it to you later. Uh, once again, using some of the technologies I, I mentioned earlier today, like RFID technologies, I'll show you a video in Canada where we have an experiment set up where not only do our elderly citizens have health cards, but they could have an RFID chip built into that health card. So now when that patient arrives to the hospital and they're unconscious, as they get wheeled into the hospital, the RFID chip in their pocket talks to your RFID reader and instantly notifies you that that person has a severe insulin allergy and they cannot get insulin. You wouldn't have known that unless that information was provided through that technology. So that is, once again, one example on the medical side where that information could be handled. It's interesting you mentioned on the commerce side, I didn't realize you would be doing any commerce transactions, but that opens up all of the commerce possibilities that we're going to go over this afternoon to determine whether any of those commerce methods make sense for your hospital. So please look at that as we go through that. But the final one that just came to my mind is, once again, anytime I get a, a business pain point like this, I try to think of, once again, I think of my kit bag of all the technologies I have hidden in this phone, and I said, if it was a perfect world, what would that, what would that look like? And I'll give you a simple example. When, a few years ago, when my dad was in the hospital quite a bit, and I tried to visit him as much as I could, but it seemed like every time I went in the hospital, he wasn't in that room anymore. So he was in that other department. And then he had to go to that other department, you know, in different tests and different rooms and different locations. And whenever I'd go to the front, you know, there'd be a lineup for the reception. So now I gotta wait in line, see which room he's in now, determine where to go, etc. But once again, when I picture the capabilities of the phone, I think of things like if if when my dad was in the hospital, if we set it up. So that these are his three children that visit him, my brother and sister and I, and these are their cell phone numbers, and the hospital tracks what room they're in, and imagine now we put a geofence around the hospital. As I arrive to the hospital, literally I could simply get a message saying your dad has been moved to the fourth floor, the radiology department, whatever it is, and now you can find him there. And that would have saved me a lot of, of trouble. So once again, I, ju I just try to think of how the technology could be applied to address specific business pain points, to, to address specific pain points. But what I simply encourage you to do is don't just look at your hospital's pain points. Ask the visitors, ask the patients, find out from them what their pain points are, 
because otherwise you won't learn. The person moved all the time and they can never find them and that's a pain point. And so just take a, a holistic view from your perspective as well as from the patients, as well as from the visitors to come up with the best solutions that make sense in that case, okay? So I think we're gonna have a lot more commerce and customer support examples this afternoon that I think will give you even more ideas, okay? Great. Okay, I think that was a really worthwhile exercise. That was great. So here's what we're gonna do. Does anyone in the back know how long we get for lunch? Is it about 45 minutes? Let's see if I get an answer for this one. Is it in the, is it in the handouts? The time? One more fifty. Oh, you guys get a long break. No, that's way too long. Okay. Well, you take your break. Oh yeah, we gotta go through the lineup and stuff. But, and I have to sort out some files in the back, but I'm gonna come back at around 12.30 and I'll be around to answer your questions. If you have very specific questions about your industry, let me know because I've, I've seen so many different industry examples now, I could probably help you with what I've seen in your industry. So whoever gets to me first gets your questions answered. Um, and I think that's about it. How about a big hand for our morning speaker? How about a big hand for our attentive Argentinian audience? <laughs> okay. Thanks very much. We'll see you in an hour or so at 1.15.